Hello, I'm Joanne Sanchez. We welcome you again to this week's edition of Your Active Life, your orthopedic educational community program. By my side, Dr. Owen Marquez. Hello, and thank you for joining us. When we think sports medicine, we immediately associate it with injuries caused by some type of sport, whether the injury was a recent one or one that may have happened years ago. We had the opportunity to go into the community in support of a pediatric health fair. There were individuals that had a couple of questions for you. Let's take a look. Dr. Marquez, my son's a freshman in high school and he's on the football team. Sometimes he complains of shin splints. What is a shin splint? First of all, we call shin splints to the pain that occurs right in front of the shin bone uh, usually uh, the distal part, that means close to the ankle, kind of in the middle of the, right on the, on the shin bone, and that is f uh, caused by uh, exercise. Usually it's an overuse syndrome, that means it's because of a repetitive uh, motion. In his case, because he's a football player, which can occur in any type of players, like the shin splints, like in football, volleyball, basketball, or simply by running or ballet, which is very common in ballet uh, players, uh, occurs this uh, so-called shin splints. So what are they? Basically, the theory in shin splints is uh, what we call uh, a small uh, compartment syndrome. To explain this is the envelope around our muscles right on the shin splints because they are very superficial, they, get, they swell, they swell very quick and they start causing pain, burning sensation, and usually they do decrease by just decreasing the, the activity. And they use that part of the muscle in the leg, which is normally we use it for running and jumping. That's the reason why we have shin splints. That means the muscle swells really quick, and that's what we call a small compartment syndrome. Uh, it's just for a term for the doctors to tell us that that muscle is in, uh, surrounded by very tight muscle and something should be done. Uh, because this is a very common injury, um, the first thing to do is trying to prevent them. It's easy for me to say, but preventing chin splints is, uh, first of all, by stretching the muscle, the specific muscle, which usually is in the legs, in the ankle. So if we stretch our ankles, stretch the calves, that will decrease the chances of chin splints. Also, footwear, it's important. The less stress we put on that area, the less pain he will have. Unfortunately, you know, playing football, they wear the, the shoes that they need a lot of traction and that also causes a little bit of stress on the, on the, shin, on the shin bone. Um, to prevent them, again, is stretching exercises, icing is a good idea, and sometimes when the pain is very, very uh, severe, then then we recommend anti-inflammatory medications and in very rare occasions that, you know, we require uh, surgery for that, which I don't think is the case in, in your son. Uh, nevertheless, I hope that could uh, have answered the question on, on shin splints. And the best thing, again, I wanted to reinforce is to prevent this. How are we gonna prevent them? Well hydrated, it's also it's important that, you know, they drink water uh, before they, they exercise. And what is recommended is they drink water at least two hours before. By the time the kids are, uh, they get thirsty or we get thirsty in the sports, we're about an hour and a half to two hours behind. So that also produces part of the shin splints, the dehydration, the, uh, the quick swelling, and sometimes we, uh, they can cramp a little bit and then we confuse that with shin splints. Also, shin splints could be just an early sign that they will have cramps or what we call Charlie horses. Um, I hope that has answered your question. Uh, I have a question. I have two kids and they're always involved with sports at school and they always have something or a sore muscle or a twisted ankle. I just want to know when it's the best time to use their ice pad or a cold or something hot to put on it. Can you answer my question please? Thank you. Well thank you for your question. This is a very common question. And uh, most of my patients in the office ask me, when do I use cold and when do I use heat? To use uh, cold, or when we use cold, is for usually the acute injuries. That means the injuries that occur almost right away. 
Uh, why? Because that will decrease the circulation, that will constrict the vessels, and they will decrease the swelling. So it's very easy to remember. If something happens almost right away, ice is much better than heat. Heat is also good, but we normally use this on a chronic or more than a week or two week injury. Why? To increase the circulation, increasing the circulation will get rid of the, of the swelling and also will get rid of the pain. So to make it simple, cold in acute injury, in injuries that just occur, heat in injuries occurred in more than a week. I think that's an easy way to remember uh, when we put hot and when we put um, uh, uh, cold uh, packs or just you know warm uh, compresses. I hope that uh, has helped to answer your question. We now are going to introduce some images of the reconstruction of the anterior cruciate ligament so you can understand how we do it in surgery. So I hope you enjoy these images. What we're looking here is basically the anatomy of the knee, the femoral tibia and the patella, and we're going to see how we reconstruct the uh, anterior cruciate ligament. This shows a torn anterior cruciate ligament in uh, which we look through the, the arthroscope. And the way we repair this is by obtaining uh, the mid portion of the patellar tendon. We use a bone tendon bone unit which is called an autograph um, in which we prepare in a separate table to introduce inside the, um, the, the knee. This uh, autograph is, uh, while we are preparing it, we introduce um, through a small incision on the knee, or small incisions on the knee, uh, we introduce an, um, the scope or the arthroscope. Um, and while we're looking at the inside of the knee, we remove the damaged anterior cruciate ligament. And what we're doing is basically substituting for a new ligament. We do that by drilling small holes in the tibia and the femur uh, with the special guides. And this ligament has to be in a very specific uh, place so it can function just like the old one. Here we're just drilling the, the holes on the tibia and the femur. And then through that a small hole we pass the autograph of the new substitute ligament which is secured by two screws. And these screws usually are bioabsorbable. That means they, they will absorb later on. And that's the way we reconstruct the uh, anterior cruciate uh, ligament. What kind of home remedies can we do to help ease pain and inflammation? Well, we generally recommend what we call RISE. RISE means rest, ice, compression, and elevation. Again, RISE. It's a funny name, but if you remember at home when something happens, just remember about rice again. is rest, ice, compression, and elevation. First of all is rest. We have to not move the, the area that is injured. We can put some ice on it to decrease the inflammation. Elevation, just put the leg or the arm up, whatever is, is hurt. Um, and compression, apply some gentle compression on the, on the area that, that is hurt. And most of the time, uh, like you say, it's a home remedy, uh, that will help. Even in the case of emergency, if you remember uh, to use that for your children or anybody who, who is hurt, that can help. And then call, call for a specialist help, that's for sure. We have come to an end of this program. We hope that this valuable information will serve as a tool to help you make important medical decisions for you and for your family. Mm -hmm.